Okay, so uh, hi everybody again. Uh, thank you for uh, joining uh, the webinar of uh, NXP and the uh, Varicide about uh, machine learning, uh, specifically on Varicide IMX810 plus uh, system on modules. In this uh, webinar, we are going to present our uh, newest embedded uh, system on module based on the latest IMX810 plus uh, processor from uh, NXP. Uh, we have the honor to have with us uh, Mrs. Alex uh, Doppelinger, Director of Product Marketing for the Building and Energy segment from NXP. Yair Hugi, our R&D manager, that is also a highly expert in uh, all the machine learning uh, segment. And uh, myself, I'm the VP of uh, Business Development and Sales at uh, Varisite. The webinar agenda will uh, focus, as I mentioned before, on uh, specifically on IMIX, IMIX ATEM uh, Plus. Uh, but first of all, we will start with an overview of the entire IMIX ATEM uh, application processor family. And then we will focus more on the IMIX ATEM uh, Plus. We will have a short intro to machine uh, learning. And then we will uh, go uh, just uh, briefly over the pin to pin families of uh, Varisite and then what we can actually offer you specifically on the IMIX ATEM uh, Plus uh, offering, both hardware, software, and the complete evaluation kits. Then we will have a short uh, session of uh, questions and uh, answers. I will uh, hand it uh, off now to uh, Alex uh, for her own uh, section. Excellent. Thanks, Ofer. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you on this session. So for truly embedded edge computing products, the high performance Atomx 8 series, what we're gonna talk about today, um, these are applications processors that support the advanced graphics, video, image processing, vision, audio, and voice. And these are all qualified for use in industrial and commercial and automotive segments for a very wide range of the applications like the ones shown on the pictures here. These are built on ARM V8 technologies, and they include an array of software-capable, compatible Cortex-A35s, A53s, A72, M4, and M7 cores. Plus, most of them include graphics processors, video processing units, digital signal processors, and there's a neural processing unit in the Atomx 8M Plus device. Today, we're gonna to focus on the 8M Plus applications processor, and that's the family on the left. The Adidamax 8M family, it's generally targeting a wide range of applications, and it's from consumer audio and video to smart homes and buildings, smart cities and infrastructure, recognized industrial HMIs, automation, and healthcare. And so with so much versatility, it's really important that we work with strong partners like Verisite to unlock the full potential of all our devices across the many different target applications. So the Adonimax 8M Plus applications processor is NXP's first device in the NXP family that adds a neural network accelerator. And this accelerator has got 2.3 tera operations per second, otherwise known as TOPS, which gives a very significant machine learning performance increase. You can still run machine learning on the A cores or the M core or the GPU, but when you run it on that uh, NPU, you really see it shine. So we've also embedded a Cortex M7 real-time processor in here, which can offload real-time functions and really um, allow for lower power consumption when the app's cores are not being used. And this is also NXP's first i.mx processor that adds inline error correcting code on the DDR memory. And this is supporting a much higher reliability and safety certification levels. Since this is a classical multimedia apps processor, it embeds advanced 2D and 3D graphics accelerators, along with three simultaneous display interfaces, H.265 video decoding and encoding hardware. We can attach up to two MIPI CSI cameras, as well as up to two USB two or three kind of cameras and ethernet connected cameras. 
the MIPI CSI cameras are supported with on-chip image signal processors, which can convert the image sensor color code outputs and improve the image quality. And the device also has in there a PDM microphone input. So this is for voice or audio applications and which you can combine together with the on-chip Hi-Fi 4 DSP to accelerate the audio processing library for voice controls or other kind of audio uh, applications. So the ADM Plus is a very welcome addition for the applications that need two gigabit ethernet controllers, because most of the item X before this time only had one, uh, so now we've got the two, as well as the audio video bridging or time-sensitive networking TSN supports. We've added a pair of CAN FD interfaces and a pair of high-speed USB 3 interfaces, which also support USB 2, plus a PCI Express with one lane. So now a deeper look at some of the key features that we designed into the IDOM X8 M Plus apps processor. So starting on the left, we've designed this device to be very power efficient and scalable. It's built in a 14 LPC FinFET technology node, which allows us to go faster with lower power consumption. This means every ARM Cortex A53 can run up to 1.8 gigahertz. Um, when you run it industrial, we usually shave off a couple of uh, 200 megahertz, so it'll run at 1.6. As well, the Cortex M core can go up to 800 megahertz, and that one doesn't change speeds at power levels that are similar and better to the comparable earlier devices. The added Cortex-M can offload the tasks such as power optimized audio playbacks or low power system level task monitoring, sensor fusion, motor controlling, there are a lot of different ways to use it. There are different device options that let you scale from one, two or four ARM Cortex-A cores with or without the hardware GPU, NPU and ISP capabilities. Next, we look at the aspects about, oh no, no, no thanks. <laughs> we'll look at the cost optimizations and the power optimizations. Uh, so the system silicon hardware designers have collaborated and created a, a size cost, cost optimized 15 millimeter square package. And this can be rooted in six or eight layers. In fact, our reference design is on six layers. And that's using high speed memory with no blind or buried vias in a compact two millimeter square reference design. The reference design includes apps processor with a PMIC, memory, flash, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connectivity. And of course, the Verisite designs make some different kinds of combinations of things, leveraging this one, but adding their own special, um, special, app, special pieces. The added MX8 M Plus is offering a choice of two different kinds of memories. It's got DDR4 and LPDDR4 running quite fast up to 1600 megahertz, which is 3200 million transfers per second. And both of those have the inline error correcting code capability. It's optional. You turn that on or off your choice. This increases the system reliability and the support uh, for systems level safety certs. It's also supporting direct connection of the PDM microphones, which means you don't need any external codecs for the microphone inputs. We're delivering the full featured and tested um, Linux and Android BSP releases for the A cores, plus for RTOS for the M cores. The ADM Plus applications processor is bringing together vision, voice, video, graphics, audio, um, user interfaces, together with the machine learning acceleration. So these together support very media rich applications such as in the smart home, smart industrial controls, and many kinds of HMIs. The dedicated graphics processing unit provides rich display experience and up to 1080p60 on the MIPI DSI interface for display. The ADM Plus is introducing a very specialized neural processing machine learning hardware accelerator, and that's the topic for this session. And finally, this processor is designed for operating in commercial or harsh environments, so it's qualified to run for more than 10 years of continual operation life. The industrial temp spec is allowing junk junction temperature ranges of minus 40 degrees up to 105 degrees C. And it is part of NXP's proven product longevity program, shipping a minimum of 15 years from the launch date. Here we see the ins and the outs of the ADM Plus. So the camera sensors can connect to any of the two MIPI CSI interfaces, 
and or two of the USB 3 FIs um, or and or two of the gigabit ethernet controller interfaces as well as the PCI Express. Any of these interfaces can access most of the on-chip resources including the ARM Cortex-A53 and the ARM Cortex-M7 cores plus the on-chip and the off-chip memories, the GPU, the video processing unit, the neural processing unit, and the DSP. In addition, the MIPI CSI interfaces can access to the on-chip image signal processing hardware to convert the image sensor code, color code outputs from raw bare to YUV, which is needed for the uh, SOC to process those images, as well as to improve the image quality along the way. These can be combined with the audio inputs to recognize speech or sound generators to provide audio user feedbacks up to three display panels to give visual instructions and decode a video to give rich media information to the user. Next slide, please. The image signal processor can be used to offload the external MIPI CSI camera connected sensors. And this provides a system level cost saving. On the Autodom X8 and Plus, the ISPs are converting the image color codes. And um, they also can do things like extract more detail from high contrast scenes, or de warp the fisheye lenses, or correct geometry for low cost lenses, as well as enhancing that image before they process it to any of the other processing units. When you use this, you can replace external ISP chips, and those are often very costly. They also often tend to have a shorter product life than is needed for industrial applications. So using the ISP on the 8M Plus, it helps with the product longevity of your design. It's also very helpful when you wanna add a high definition camera if it doesn't already embed the ISP, because many of them don't do that. Next slide, please. Then I will switch gears a little bit to talk about the machine learning. And we've been hearing about this for so long, but it finally appears like the wave is here. There was an EE time survey in 2019, which indicates that 55% of developers say that their current or their future work requires machine learning of one kind or another. And that number is much higher now. We're seeing very high interest in this. And 2021 really seems like the year when significant portion of the design world is really ready to dig in. Next slide, please. We typically talk about three types of machine learning. So we talk about computer vision as one, or speech analysis as another one, and you could call that also audio analysis. And then finally, sequence analysis, where you see things like anomaly detections or waveform analysis. And the type of device you need to process each of these really depends on your type of inference activity. So for example, we could use something like an IMX RT1060, which is a, a microcontroller, an MCU, which has one Cortex-M7 core at a gigahertz. And so with that device, you can recognize faces and still images. If you wanna detect objects or more faces from a live video feed, then you probably would switch to something like the Autodom X8 m applications processor family. And there you can leverage one to four of the ARM Cortex-A53 cores or the GPU. And if you're surveilling many objects that are moving around, such as people on, and cars on a busy street, then we would recommend to use the neural processing unit on the 8M Plus, which runs at up to 2.3 tera operations per second, as shown on the chart here. So you can see how we scale across the different kinds of applications using the different types of features inside each of the processors. Next slide, please. So how do we deploy a model on each device? And if we take the 8M Plus as an example, the model parsing and command generation occurs on the A cores. And these use an API to transfer some of the functions to the neural processing unit through its controller. These are things like activation functions, dense layers, matrix multiplication, normalization, reshaping, RNN, the NPU can then access the SDRAM with DMAs to get the model weights, the parameters, and the intermediate data, which is stored out there. 
We've been developing some tools and references to help enable these uh, machine learning across the range of the NXP devices. And that and integration is ongoing for IDENOM X8 M Plus. So all of that will launch together with the processor in Q1 of 2021. So NXP IDENOM X applications processors are designed from the ground up to improve our interaction with machines in harsh industrial and manufacturing environments, with consumers in commercial environments, with people in their homes, it's a wide range of things. And we're very excited to be on the forefront of the latest developments, so, and we hope to hear from you soon. So now I'll hand it back to Verisite to show you how they can help you build your machine learning applications faster and easier. Yeah, here. Thanks a lot, Alex. So uh, Yair will take it uh, from here. Chris here. Yes. Hi, my name is Yair. Uh, I will give a bit overview about artificial intelligence and machine learning, especially on the edge. Uh, so what is artificial intelligence? It's the ability of a computer to perform tasks that's associated with human intelligence making decisions which are complex and analyze uh, complex uh, questions and, uh, and problems. Machine learning is a subset of it, which is a computer algorithm which learns from its experience and from new data and tries to predict uh, what will happen. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning that is used for analyzing the data and it's based on neural net technologies which will see how this technology works a bit. The technology is based on neurons and why should we use it? Actually machine learning, uh, we use it to predict an output trend or determine what, what's going to be based on new inputs, trying to predict it. Deep learning, we use it for classification, identification, and enhancement of signals. Actually, you can find also uh, signal processing algorithms that are based on deep learning, which are used for enhancing uh, signals. So what is an artificial new neuron? It's actually a unit that, that has a vector of input values, multiplies them by weights, and accumulate. What is known from the field of signal processing, this is kind of, I would say, a multiply, accumulate, or a dot product operation, also known as dot product operation. At the end of a neuron, there's a nonlinear activation function. The activation function may be a sigmoid, uh, uh, relu or leaky relu and so on. But here is a, it always here it's a nonlinear function that act that acts on the outputs of the multiply accumulate operation. In artificial neural networks, there's a large number of interconnected neurons, and each neuron. Uh, is capable, should receive from its previous layer multiple inputs and computes, the, and according to, to the inputs, it computes an output based on what we have seen in the architecture here of a neuron. <clears throat> it is very common in neural networks to measure computation complexity in operations per second. For people who come from the DSP uh, world, uh, two operations are equivalent to one multiply accumulate operation. Very, co very common small networks are in the order of 300 million to 800 million operations per pass, meaning going from the input to the output, it will take this order of operations in order to have a result at the output. Since it, they, are, they are very, uh, 
computation complexity is very high, so it's common to measure it in, in gig operations per second or tera operations per second. <clears throat> what are advantages of machine learning on the edge? First, it's bandwidth and latency. When, it's, when we are on the edge, we cannot necessarily rely on the cloud to do the processing because latency may affect the performance of our system. Security and data privacy. In many systems where vision is, is uh, used uh, for analyzing the data, we have uh, images of people and uh, GDPR regulations uh, require that at the end that you will be able to process at the edge and not even send the data over the network. Decentralization, sometimes you don't want a, a centralized computation uh, unit. You want to spread the computation among several units where each one is the backup of another one or several uh, computation units can compensate for another unit. Cost effective, at the end, having computation at the edge reduces the cost of our system. Availability. When we talk about autonomous systems, availability is one of the things we have to take into consideration because not necessarily we always have connection to the network and the system must perform. <clears throat> when it comes to processing at the edge, in general, uh, a uh, solution on the edge has to handle specific algorithms or specific use cases which allows customization of the network and actually re reducing the network size and computation complexity. <laughs> redundancy in, we can build a, it's easier to build redundant systems in this case and still keep, maintain low cost solutions. Here we demonstrate some uh, photos from what we run what is known as POSNET on uh, an IMX8 uh, plus. Now I'll hand the presentation to Ofer. Thanks, Yair. And I have to apologize in the name of Yair of uh, his uh, voice today. He was talking too much in the past uh, several days. Uh, I will uh, talk uh, for just a few uh, minutes about uh, parasite uh, positioning, today we are actually the number uh, one arm-based uh, system on module uh, vendor. We are shipping actually more than one million units uh, per year already. We are almost 18 years in the same uh, market. We have uh, actually above 5,000 customers around the world. We have the most uh, diversified arm-based uh, product portfolio, specifically based on NXP, iMix, portfolio that uh, you can see uh, starting from uh, IMX uh, 6 at the time, then uh, UL 7, and now all the product line coming from the IMX 8, 8M, 8M Mini, 8M Nano, Quad Max, 8X, and the latest 8M uh, Plus. We are the only song vendor that was actually uh, granted an NXP Platinum membership and uh, this is giving us a very close relationship to uh, the team that uh, Alex is one of the team members, but uh, all the teams that are coming uh, both on the technical side and also marketing side, as well as early access to, to the processors from NXP. Uh, we have our own internal production lines, so we can actually optimize each and every uh, module that we provide to the customer and uh, do a kind of a tailored design for the customer and the assembly for uh, for his own specifications. We're certified also for uh, medical uh, 13485, beyond the uh, ISO 9001, so the quality that all our customers can enjoy is practically the, the one that is provided to, to the medical uh, companies that I mentioned uh, before. Just a bit about uh, our pin-to-pin -pin, uh, product uh, family. So we have uh, two uh, families that we call a pin-to-pin -pin family. One is based on an edge connector, 
of 200 pins, uh, similar to what you can uh, find from the memory SOD of uh, the DDRs, that is actually started about uh, eight years ago on the IMX uh, 6. And uh, we have started actually with the solo dual and the IMX 6 uh, quad. Later, we scaled it down to the IMX 6 uh, UL and ULL that you can uh, see at the top uh, right. Later, uh, when we have uh, introduced the IMX 8 uh, family, we extended the, uh, the Barson family to the, to the Nano, to the ATM Nano, to the ATM uh, Mini, as well as the higher uh, performance processors like the 8X and even the 8 Quad Max and Quad Plus that can go up to six cores of A72 plus uh, A53s, and naturally the latest 8M Plus that you see on the top uh, left. The other family that we have, uh, what we call is the Dart, it's uh, more for uh, size-limited uh, end products that uh, prefer to have a smaller form factor. It is uh, based on uh, three board-to-board -board connectors, uh, so a total of 270 pins are available here, uh, which actually giving uh, the customer uh, more uh, flexibility also on the pin mux options, because there are 70 pins more than uh, compared to the Barsom uh, family with 200 pins. And uh, while in some cases there might be the same interfaces that are available on the Barsom and the Dart, there will be less uh, pin mooxing options on each and every pin, and you can use more interfaces uh, simultaneously on the Dart family. So in some cases, customers prefer the Dart, in other cases, they prefer the Barsom. Naturally, the Barsom is more scalable because the Dart is limited on size, and processors, uh, big processors like the 8 Quad Max or the 8X, with more memories and more features uh, not uh, fitting into the form factor of the Dart, and we introduce them only on the bar song. So there are some pros and cons for each and every family here. And pay attention uh, to the note, while uh, they are pin-to-pin, -pin, naturally there are some interfaces that are not necessarily pin-to-pin -pin between uh, all of them. We do try to maintain uh, most of the, let's say, common interfaces that will be pin-to-pin, -pin, and we introduced a carrier board that uh, you can actually use as a reference design and scale up from one processor to, to the other, specifically moving uh, many customers who are actually starting, for example, with the Mini, and now they would like to, to move up to the 8M Plus or the other way uh, around from the Mini to the Nano, and even down to the 6UL in case there is no specific multimedia needs, for example. Talking a bit about uh, what we are providing on the 8M Plus, I will not run through all the features. Uh, Alex actually did it before. Uh, most of the things that you are seeing here are practically copied from IMX 8M processor itself. On top of the processor itself, we are uh, integrating a few more options and interfaces that the customer can select. And I stressed before that we have our own production lines, so uh, this is one of the advantages. For example, if you need a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, then uh, we can uh, put it inside the, the assembly process. If you don't need it, then uh, we're taking it out and you're not paying for it. And uh, you can see here that uh, there is uh, practically one Wi-Fi assembled per, per model but there is an option for two Wi-Fi, so we can actually put a single band or a dual band, one of them can be assembled, and then if you don't need a dual band, then you can actually procure the, the single band and not pay extra for the dual band uh, features. Both uh, Wi-Fi's are fully certified, and uh, those actually giving you another layer of uh, security when you're moving to full production on your end product, then you can easily certify your end product as well. Naturally, the, around the, the processor, all the things that uh, are needed in order to operate it, uh, the memory, the, the storage, and a few more interfaces options like uh, the gigabit Ethernet uh, FI that can be assembled, the audio codec, and alike. So th this is talking about, again, the, the two ATM Plus models. 
around that, we are providing a full and complete evaluation and reference platform that beyond the system and module, you get, I, I mentioned before, the carrier board, we call it the symphony board, that allows you to not only evaluate the platform, but actually use it as a kind of a reference for your own carrier board design. We provide all design files and the customer can easily copy and paste from the schematics and layout of the symphony board to his own uh, design. All the software that is related to the kit is also provided by, by Varisite. I uh, listed here uh, the, the main operating system that we are uh, supporting, the Linux, both Yocto and Debian, Android. We give also examples and support for free Artos and Boot So all those are actually detailed uh, inside the, the wiki pages of Varisite and you can uh, go into the wiki pages and easily see all the details on how to operate each and every interface and the additional features that are needed for evaluation and the design. On the right side, you can see some of the extension boards that we also provide. Some are actually coming from Varisite, others coming from partners like Bustler on, on the camera sensors and uh, others that are a kind of ecosystem around Varisite system and module uh, solutions. You have here also HDMI output and the other uh, camera boards that are provided around the complete system. Uh, this is the contact us uh, page, so you have all the details. Naturally, we will share with you and you can uh, take it from uh, there. And now we will move into some questions and things that we got from you throughout uh, the webinar today. And uh, we will start maybe one for you, Alex. So uh, if you can uh, go out of mute, there is a question about uh, Windows 10 IoT. Is it available today? Because uh, it was actually mentioned in your slide. Is there any Windows IoT support or plans? <laughs> Okay, thanks for that question. So, yeah, there has been um, ongoing Windows supports for different I.M.X processors, including Win 10. There's a website which maybe we can provide that afterwards over, right? But a website link to all of the available Win 10 supports. There's still more work to do, though, and it's very important depending on your use case and how many of the features you want to actually access inside the devices to contact us and contact Microsoft and let, let us both know what it is you need if it's something missing from what's already provided on the Adidam X8 series and the 6. Thanks. And I think this is between uh, maybe you and Yair. Uh, can you talk about the warm-up uh, time required for the NPU? I think Yair, you've been messing around with that. Yeah, there's an, application, there's an application out of NXP which provides information about the warm-up time, but what specifically did you want to know about? Actually, I think I understand that question. So that is a, right now, NDA discussion. So great if you contact us and we'll go into it. Um, and the answer is it, it kind of depends, you know, on which toolkit you use, or you'll get a different answer depending on which toolkit you use as well. Okay, there is a, one for me actually. Uh, there was a question if can we already deliver a product based on the IMX item uh, plus and which revision actually of the silicon is provided here. So yes, as I have uh, presented before, uh, the full evaluation kit is actually already shipped uh, to our uh, Alpha customers in the past several weeks. And the evaluation kits that we have today are all based on the A0 silicon uh, from NXP, which is the generic sample that we got from them. Uh, later this year, uh, in January timeframe, we are actually about to get the A1 silicon that is the one targeted for mass production. And then uh, during Q1, we are actually moving to full uh, production on that. Uh, and, uh, another uh, question uh, for you, Alex. 
can the ISP generate an RGB or ARGB image uh, from a Bayer image? Yes, uh, that's one of the functions on the ISP is to convert the raw bear into the RGB. And then it gets okay. passed into the other other elements in the device. Uh, and it's very open to where you can send that image. It, it's got free access on the system bus to go to the A core, the GPU, the NPU, the M7, the DSP. Okay, there is another, uh, I, would, I wouldn't call it a follow-up question, but uh, I would say more of the same family. Is the ATEM Plus uh, machine, learning machine learning accelerator able to work similar as an image signal processor? So the machine learning accelerator is excellent at doing the dot product like described in the slides. The ISP functions are sometimes similar math. So there's no reason you cannot use it if, if the math, uh, the Mac is the right kind of a math machine for what you're doing, you can use it. But most of the time we would see the ISP or something else in the device do that image processing. Okay, thank you. And another question for me is uh, your new M plus Model fully dropping pin to pin compatible with the other iMix8 uh, models. I think that I've uh, mentioned that uh, during the presentation, you can easily design a carrier board similar to the Symphony that we provide that will support the 8M Plus as well as uh, other processors. Again, need to pay attention to the pin MOOC uh, selection. Uh, we are actually providing our customers with uh, an Excel table, Excel tool that uh, the customer can easily use and check all the different interfaces, which ones are pin compatible and how to optimize the pin MOOC selection in order to make, for example, the ATEM Plus system and module uh, pin to pin drop in compatible with uh, others. So uh, this is uh, the general question. Another one is talking about which uh, kernel version we are currently supporting. So the latest release that we have is uh, 5.4.47. Naturally, we are updating uh, our Linux releases as well as the Android releases after NXP is formally releasing their own Linux and Android version. Then we're actually taking that, making the adjustment to our own platform, the, the BSP and everything that is related to the platform, uh, testing everything, making it uh, production ready, and then we are submitting that to the wiki pages of Barisite that I mentioned before. Uh, Go for, I can add on to that one. Thanks. Sure. Yes. So the Linux 5.4 is the current release, and we do a Linux update at the end of every quarter. So at the end of Q4, it'll still be on a, a Linux 5.4. And then at the end of Q1, we'll be moving into 5.10. Okay, excellent. I think that uh, actually our time is up even we took a few more minutes for the Q&As. So I really want to thank, to, to thank you, Alex, for, for uh, your participant in uh, this uh, webinar. It was uh, excellent. And uh, everybody else, thank you for joining us and uh, stay safe. Thank you very much.